by changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more complaining. People, their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more. So. We talked about the Tao of Pooh a couple of days ago, and then yesterday I flipped things around and I talked about Pogo, the uh, comic strip. And speaking of comic strips, one that I've just absolutely loved and which I see a lot of connection between Winnie the Pooh is Calvin and Hobbes, Calvin and Hobbes. And I don't think it's, uh, I think his name is Waterman who does Calvin and Hobbes. The reason I say that is I've had all these compendiums. My all time favorite comic strip would have to be Bloom County. One of my favorite Calvin and Hobbes though was, and by the way, just in case you don't recall, Calvin is the little boy. He looks a little bit like a thin Charlie Brown with a tuft of hair on his head. And Hobbes is his stuffed tiger who comes to life whenever there are no adults in the room. And they have all these amazing adventures. <clears throat> They're in a heated discussion over something. And Finally, Hobbes, the tiger, agrees with Calvin and then does something the exact opposite. And he goes, no, no, today is opposite day. <laughs> there is no such thing as opposite day. And after many years of reading personal development books and being in therapy and journaling and writing best-selling books myself, one of the things that I've discovered is that doing the opposite is one of the best things we can do. So I want to invite you today to declare today to be your opposite day. Here's what I mean. If you don't feel like exercising and you really don't, then that means you need to do the opposite. In most cases, the best thing we can do for ourselves is the opposite of what we are currently doing. I'm jumping off into a new project I'm very excited about. And rather than jumping in too fast, too much, I'm taking today to do some personal things and to have a massage. And I'm excited about that. That's the opposite of what I would normally do. And what, what I know and what I've discovered is that when I do the opposite, that's where the great benefits are. If your normal way would be to put on headphones and not at least greet the people who would get on a plane with you, <laughs> I'm probably disclosing too much about myself, to leave the headphones off and say, hi, good morning, etc to establish a nice feeling with the people who are sitting around you. That's an opposite thing. If normally you would not have a salad with your lunch, do the opposite. In many cases, the opposite of what we think we need to do or want to do or feel like doing for crying out loud, we should do because that is the thing that is going to spiral us higher in our lives. Forgiveness. How about that? When you are just really, really, really upset about something or should be justifiably to just go and forgiveness really is wiping the slate clean is what it means. I don't remember it. I don't think about it. I don't focus on it. Best example of that, I think is the next to the last or third to the last episode of the first season of Ted Lasso, my favorite TV show right now. Forgiveness, just wiping the slate clean, because in most cases, we don't want to do that, especially with ourselves, especially with ourselves. So what if you did, what if you took something that was not what it is you want to do or not something you find appealing or something that you struggle to do and just say, today is opposite day. Today is opposite day. I need to remember, today is opposite day. I'm going to do the opposite. Ah. And I'm not just talking physically. I'm also talking mentally. 
I remember not too long ago, because I'm ready for a new car now. I'm absolutely ready for a new car. I've had my, my existing car for almost 20 years. I've discovered that I fall in love with a car and I want to keep it as long as possible. I get the right car and I fall in love with it. And some things were coming up or a number of things to prevent me from getting the car. And I asked myself, what is it that I did last time I got my car? Well, I got a picture of the exact car that I wanted and I sat and I looked at it and I put myself mentally into it. Now, what I wanted to do or what my mind already was doing was giving me the reasons why this was not going to happen <laughs> this time or ever, et cetera, because right now it's difficult to get cars and they're expensive. And I remembered back then just putting myself in this mindset of seeing it. So on Sunday, I wanted to mentally put myself in the place of being there. And so I drove to Miami. I went to the dealership. I sat in a variety of these cars and models, et cetera, that I was looking at, came back. And then a number of things have already sort of kind of going, okay, <laughs> and this is going to happen. Our minds go down a path. And, and I'm reminded of the great Earl Nightingale, who said, we get into a rut in our lives. And that, that is a rut, is, this is me, but a rut is just the beginning of the word routine <laughs> without the O, as in, oh my gosh, I'm in a rut. We get caught in these ruts in our lives and it's comfortable. It makes sense. We're actually looking for something that's well-grooved, etc. And then we don't want to get out and sometimes find a better, different way, a different way of being, different way of doing. I love when Hobbes says, today is opposite day. Today is opposite day. The things that I'm attached to, I'm no longer attached to or whatever. And the funny thing is, once I kind of got unattached to whether or not this is happening, it moves even more. So it's that thing my friend shared with me of attention, intention, no tension, uh, or intention, attention, no tension. That's it. Intention. Set your intention. Give it your attention with no tension. Right now, if you could see the fullness of my screen, there's my car. I've got a studio shot that I just downloaded the image. I've also got an Amazon device down here that rotates it through periodically. It's the home screen on my phone. Going in the rut I was going in, by the way, Earl Nightingale, I never closed that loop. He said that a rut is nothing more than a grave with the ends kicked out. A rut is nothing more than a grave with the ends kicked out. I want to invite you to do the opposite, both physically and mentally today. Not everything. I want you to pick something. You know, they've proven that people who drive the same way to work every single day and drive the same way home, regardless of the drive. I used to have a beautiful drive home through the country, with the horses and everything. But they say that if you vary your drive, that you actually will become a happier person. It is so normal for us to fall into ruts, routines, and it is important for us to attempt to break out of them on occasion. That's what I'm doing today. So I'm practicing what I preach. Like I said, I'm fortunate I work. I don't work. I do what I love. I do what I love for myself and uh, whenever I want to. And so I can actually take time to do other things for myself when I want to as well. That's an opposite thing for me. And here's another opposite thing. You ready for this? Not only taking the time and doing the actions, being totally cool with myself doing that, being totally cool with myself doing that. It's amazing right now. You're going to see me on the road a lot because we've already got booked for next year, more speeches than I would normally do in a year. And what that means is we'll still book dozens next year. 
And that is so exciting. And I feel like I need to somehow be involved. And right now I'm like, no, I give myself total permission to check out and do other things that are important to No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no 